Okay, uh, so today I'm going to briefly talk about uh, what Wiremock and Kubernetes and Wiremock and Kubernetes. So the question for you, who does know what Wiremock is? Who does or does not? Uh, who does know? Okay, so there are not so many Java developers here right, today, right? <laughs> Okay, uh, so good news that you don't need uh, to know Java uh, uh, to follow this talk, and actually it's not about uh, Java at all. Um, so yeah, we are really talking about uh, Mocking APIs and Kubernetes. Um, yeah, uh, currently I work uh, for Wiremock. I joined Wiremock in April. Before that, I spent maybe six and a half years with CloudBees, working on Jenkins community and the ecosystem. Then I was with Dynatrace. Currently, I'm a CNCF ambassador, also Continuous Delivery Foundation ambassador and TOC member. So I'm doing a lot in terms of interoperability of tools, so observability for CI/CD, and also eventing for CI/CD. And uh, yeah, I joined Wiremock firstly because I really love this tool. I actually, I'm actually a hardware engineer, but then I started doing uh, software and a lot of Java, and ended up using Wiremock for maybe 10 years. And in April, when uh, I was looking for a new job, I discovered that there is a small startup, Wiremock Inc., uh, that basically does SaaS as monetization engine. Uh, there is also Kubernetes in progress. Uh, but yeah, I discovered that uh, there is a company behind Wiremock. I'm employee number seven. So most likely you haven't heard about this company, uh, but yeah. So today I will be actually talking not just about Wiremock, but about API mocking in general. And maybe you heard about a tool called Microx. Have you? Well, there were announcements just uh, last week. Uh, so I guess uh, if you follow CNCF channels, maybe you have noticed them. But yeah, uh, I am not doing uh, any versus uh, talks today. I'm just going to present two options and uh, let, uh, provide you with enough information so you can compare the approaches. Um, so if you want these slides uh, with proper contrast, uh, then you can just take the QR code um, and uh, yeah. Uh, then uh, these slides are already public. And uh, today, a full disclaimer, I'm talking only about open source. I will provide some examples from SaaS, but uh, all I'm presenting you can reproduce with open source, and in my case, it's just for better visualization. So uh, by now, yeah, uh, everyone does a lot of code. Uh, there is a lot of uh, software around. And of course, when we talk about software, there is a lot of APIs. Uh, so, who is doing microservices here? Okay, more hands than Java, that's good. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, so when you do microservices, most likely you use gRPC, REST APIs, uh, maybe you use uh, more binary protocols, for example, in embedded, you can use ASN, you can use uh, web sockets, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, all of that actually falls in the category of APIs, which can be synchronous and syn or asynchronous, but uh, currently APIs are everywhere. If you want to develop a complex system, you actually need them. Um, in um, cloud native space, of course, gRPC is uh, the most popular one. Um, then uh, there is a lot of other implementations. Uh, there is also a sync API being developed at the moment. Of course, we have a lot of GraphQL in modern services uh, and uh, cloud events for eventing, uh, because eventing is also a kind of API, though it's asynchronous via. Um, and uh, what happens these days is so that uh, there is actually a lot of standards also around these APIs, um, including Open API, Async API. So, funny thing, uh, there are two uh, Open API standards. Of course, both of them are part of the Linux Foundation, different foundations within the Linux Foundation. So, everything as we like in IT. Uh, but uh, in principle, we get, for API development, you get a lot of developer tools, debugging tools, specification tools. So if you have ever used Swagger, so OpenAPI is basically Swagger on steroids. Async API is attempt to redesign um, the APIs and to focus more on asynchronous communications, uh, which is, again, for cloud native systems becomes quite important. So this is why uh, this standard uh, got a lot of attention from the CNCF recently. The question is, uh, are there actually tools that allow to develop uh, with these APIs? Uh, have you ever heard about API mocking? 
Yeah, so API mocking is basically a principle, uh, especially for integration testing and sometimes for unit testing, when you take uh, a part of your system that is not implemented or maybe too heavy, it may be a part of uh, legacy software without specifications, it may be just uh, a too heavy system or a database. So yeah, before we were talking about database at the previous talk. So what I'm presenting today is definitely not for databases because for databases you use tools like test containers if you want to do integration testing. But for your own services, for services that do not have a lot of state and a lot of data, one of possible approaches for integration testing is actually just mocking tools, uh, just mocking things. And of course, as everywhere, we have a lot of tools. Uh, and uh, yeah, actually the layout looks like that. Uh, yeah, I'm not even trying to cut things from the uh, CNCF landscape, but at the moment uh, there is only one cloud native tool uh, which would be open source, which would be considered uh, production ready. It's Microx, so it's a tool uh, that's part of the CNCF foundation. Uh, there is a lot of open source and uh, private source tools uh, that are uh, popular uh, in classic development like Wiremock, of course, Postman, Macoon, Mock Server, etc. Et uh, there is actually a Wikipedia page with maybe 50 entries. Uh, so you can uh, start from there if you're interested. And I'm just uh, going to focus on two tools because I want to reserve more time to actually show the code today and maybe get something running. So I'm using Windows laptop. I don't have much hope for that today, but let's see. Um, okay, so Microx. Microx is the API mocking tool that uh, basically got released a few years ago. Uh, it's an attempt to provide cloud native API mocking solution uh, that actually addresses all common cases for cloud native systems. So basically the idea that uh, when you run in the cluster, uh, may, you can isolate a part of your cluster and just provide mock interface for testing, or you can just inject a service that doesn't exist yet uh, for development purposes. and. Uh, yeah, I guess it's too small, right? No? Okay. Uh, so, the website doesn't exactly scale well, but okay. So I guess it's implemented with Hugo. Um, and yeah, here basically the idea is that you get a lot of, st yeah, I'll just uh, switch back <laughs> then. Okay, uh, so the idea for uh, um, Microx is that you take a standard specification, for example, Open API, uh, Async API, and then basically from this specification you create a mock definition. So basically you say that for one particular request, whether it's a gRPC call, whether it's a REST API endpoint, uh, you say, so for this particular uh, request, for these parameters, maybe for this header, or form parameters, etc. There can be a lot of things. You provide this uh, particular response, and uh, this is basically what tools like Wiremock or Microx do in a nutshell. And this is why it's considered that one can create this tool in five minutes or in five hours, depending on how ambitious you are. But actually, there is a lot of other features we are going to talk about. Uh, but yeah, it's basically uh, if the end thing that uh, receive a response and the uh, response to you. Uh, of course, uh, Microx has a lot of advantages if we talk about Kubernetes deployments uh, because uh, yeah, it's fully cloud native, so it can scale to zero. It can infinitely scale, so there is horizontal scaling embedded. There is operator that actually allows to manage that. If you like more classic deployments, so there is uh, Helm charts and everything uh, we are used to. So basically it's a classic cloud native tool that you deploy. Uh, there is actually also cross-plane integration that allows to provision environments with some API mocking out of the box. And uh, yeah, you can use them. So important thing that just uh, one week ago uh, uh, before so after I actually applied for this talk, uh, Microx uh, was accepted as a sandbox project to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So I believe with the current adopters, with a number of contributors that will soon reach the incubating stage. And yeah, it's definitely a project to follow. And actually this is one of the first uh, developer tooling projects within the CNCF. We had a meeting with a few uh, Microx maintainers just yesterday because we have some ideas on open specifications, alignment, etc. And yeah, uh, we had a lot of grumbles about uh, the fact that there is not enough uh, developer tooling in the CNCF. Uh, 
how Microx actually operates. Uh, Microx operates only as a container uh, or port level. So basically you cannot just uh, take uh, abstract service and inject it in your test like sometimes uh, we do with other solutions. So you have to always provision a container and to use it. So there are adapters, for example, for GitLab, Tecton, Jenkins, etc., which basically automate that. So for example, if you have your pipeline, you can uh, define a code block uh, or a section where you need a mocking server. Uh, you basically define that yeah, here I need uh, my mocking server. Then inside that you run all um, tests, all makes, uh, assuming the environment which is injected. And then basically the test, uh, the instance is tiered down. So basically everything operates on external level from your application. So it's not integrated in the test frameworks. Instead of that, it's just an instance that is deployed separately. So you could uh, do the same manually with crossplane if you have a ready system, but if you don't, uh, yeah, you can use uh, uh, Microx. Uh, YMOC is a, a bit different, and this is why uh, when we have Microx, it's actually important to talk about more classic uh, API mocking tools. Uh, so YMOC is a tool that actually was around for more than 10 years. It started as a Java uh, uh, tool, but uh, then it expanded to many other languages and ecosystems. Uh, it can uh, fully run in the cloud native environments, of, well, in Kubernetes environments, cloud native environment. These things, in my opinion, doesn't exist. Okay, so YMOC, uh, yeah, it started as a Java tool. Now um, it's widely adopted in various ecosystems and tool chains. It has more than 5 million downloads uh, yeah, a month. It's a huge number, but uh, as all of you know, clean build uh, generates a lot of these downloads, right? Uh, so, yeah, but uh, if you search on GitHub, it's used by more than 3,000 open source projects that are part of organizations, not on individual accounts. It's actually uh, quite big. So, YMOC Core has 180 contributors, so the whole ecosystem, more than 400 contributors by now. And it keeps evolving. So the features that we normally forget about, it's not just uh, mocking, so not but uh, if you receive something, you respond, but uh, there is also a lot of advanced use cases you may have. So for example, uh, there might be dynamic response templating, so if you need microscripting, for example, depending on the argument, you need to return a custom result. So there is some script, uh, for example, in YMOC we use handlebars that inject customizable response. Uh, uh, also, which is important, you can actually use YMOC in your test environments. So you do not have to provision a standalone container. We operate on the level of uh, unit tests. So for example, if you write a test in Golang, you can uh, provision a container just for a single test, or you can provision just a YMOC instance even without a container for a single test and then tear it down. Uh, it also has a lot of advanced features uh, that are not available in other tools. For example, it can inject uh, fault, uh, and latencies. So if you like chaos engineering, if you want to do some stress testing without implementing a service, you can actually do that. And the one important feature that I use basically every day is a record and playback. So in YMOC, you can just uh, uh, use connect YMOC as a proxy to any service. And then uh, once you connect uh, to the service, uh, you can uh, record all the responses uh, and uh, recreate definitions, even extract open API definition later. And actually, then you can uh, have something to reproduce your test sequences. And uh, later, I will show a bit about uh, these two steps. But combined together, uh, they actually become really powerful. Because you can, for example, take your very stable, well-designed service that never fails. Because when the service never fails, it's actually quite a big challenge to emulate failures in the service for test purposes. And uh, for that purpose, you can uh, take a proxy like YMOC that would uh, monitor all traffic and in particular conditions, etc. It would inject failures so that you can, without actually modifying your code base, without doing a lot of instrumentation, you can actually emulate various kinds of failures. So these are key features. And again, we started as a small Java tool. But what happened maybe two or three years ago, uh, when the demand in API market uh, got really high, uh, there are new implementations of uh, YMOC started appearing, for example, in Rust, in Golang. Uh, somebody tried to create it in C++, and this somebody is me. I failed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I will uh, talk about it later. Uh, 
Um, and uh, yeah, uh, what do we have now? There is actually a CAS system, especially for Java, that uh, supports multiple frameworks. The most popular implementations at the moment are, of course, for Java, uh, for .NET. So for .NET, uh, there is a standalone server implementation and basically standalone everything, uh, because yeah, uh, there are just different uh, architecture approach there. Also implementation for Rust, uh, with some magic you can run Java on Android, etc. There is Golang implementation. So actually, for all modern technology stacks, if you Google, you can find uh, a repository that does something with Wimok. I spent some time when I just joined uh, uh, to collect a big Google Doc. Mm, so eventually there will be landscape there. Uh, because uh, LFX landscape is an open source project, but right now it's of course a Google document, but you can find all the information uh, for different languages, for di different technology stacks, and of course everything is dominated by Java here at the moment. But actually it's not just about Java. We also have a solution for Kubernetes, which rather works as end-to-end -end one. Uh, for Kubernetes solution, uh, I will just uh, show you a stack of repositories. So the first three are rather boring. So we use Wimok Java uh, because uh, yeah, Java runs well uh, inside containers. Uh, so Wimok uh, has Quarkus extension, for example, if you need uh, something uh, with static initialization with a really fast startup. Uh, hopefully we'll have native images soon. At the moment it's kind of working, uh, but uh, some improvements would be needed. Then of course uh, there is Docker image which is, of course, not just for Docker. It's just Docker format, but it runs on any container uh, engine. And uh, yeah, it's just a standard image with all configuration as code bundled. We have official Helm charts. Then something interesting for Kubernetes starts. And uh, yeah, how does it work? OK, something like that. Um, so uh, Kubernetes image, sorry, Helm charts, again, are quite classic ones. So it's just a simple provisioning of Wimok with uh, just configuration that you want to inject with configurable mappings. Uh, so basically, this uh, response, uh, request a response logic. And at the moment, uh, for the Helm chart, uh, is basically a single instance. So there is no horizontal scaling yet. Uh, but I think it's something that should be implemented at some point. Uh, for Docker Compose, uh, there is already, for Docker Swarm, uh, uh, there is uh, still a repository, uh, there is a repository that does um, uh, scaling, so somebody can easily migrate it to Kubernetes. And uh, uh, what else we have? We have gRPC integration. Uh, so gRPC uh, is basically used uh, as a standalone container. So instead of running uh, uh, within Java code, we decided at some point that it would be standalone container. Again, within a port, it doesn't uh, matter. But uh, yeah, it, it does all the conversions. So even when you develop in gRPC, actually you uh, get convert everything converted to REST APIs with some JSON metadata that can be also parsed. Uh, but uh, yeah, this thing could be actually better. Uh, and yeah, last but not least, um, what I actually believe in and uh, why I think that YMOC has a lot more potential than uh, uh, Microx for development, for example, is actually using your unit tests. Because uh, for us, uh, if we deploy the service each time, it means that we still have to manage the service, configure this service. And for me, for example, when doing configuration testing, the use case has been always testing against multiple configurations, multiple versions of software, multiple versions of API, Java versions, etc., etc. So for me, it's important to include everything uh, in unit tests. So if you're familiar with JUnit, so in JUnit it looks like that. So basically you put, uh, does everyone know test containers by now? So yeah, it's basically a framework uh, for unit testing that manages a lot of container things. So we just put one annotation, then we say that we need a YMOC container of particular version. We pass a mapping, so this is just one file. And then uh, we just go uh, send a request, assuming that the service is there. Uh, important thing that it can actually provision a, a container port. Uh, so um, uh, test containers uses a Docker engine. It cannot go, for, unfortunately, to container D. It cannot go to Creo. But on the other hand, it can use uh, many other features, for example, Docker Compose to combine clusters of containers, which makes it uh, 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 easier to use. Uh, in Golang, well, in Golang, I think we need to zoom in a bit. Uh, because, yeah. 
when uh, we write code in Golang, there is of course um, yeah a lot of uh, um, uh, error handling, but in Golang it's basically the same. So again, uh, this is a new model that was created. So how does it look in Golang? Basically the same, more or less. So there is um, a test. In the test, we basically just, uh, uh, we have a uh, test container that basically wraps all the logic. And here, for example, we run container, we pass a mapping. Yeah, I know that I had uh, told uh, a lot uh, mapping many times, but I haven't presented it. So first of all, it's JSON, not YAML. Uh, and the very simple mapping looks like that. Uh, so basically, yeah, it's a primitive thing for hello re get request, we respond hello world. Obviously, this mapping can easily go to a few hundred lines if there is a lot of conditions, a lot of parsing logic, uh, fetching, uh, yeah. But uh, this is a simple one. And what happens uh, in test containers test? So yeah, we pass this mapping, uh, and then, uh, yeah, we also need uh, to set up uh, termination on our own, uh, upon the completion of the test. Uh, ho uh, fortunately, we have uh, tooling for that. Um, and then, basically, container starts. Uh, we re uh, extract it, uh, its URL because the port is randomly assigned. And after that, we, again, just send HTTP request and process all the responses. So again, these parts can be as complex as you want because uh, there is a lot of advanced features. Uh, yeah, there are basically uh, tons of documentation for different cases, but in principle, it's just like that for any test. And the advantage is that you can actually provision multiple services, you can provision uh, clusters, so for example, you can put uh, YMOC in front of your application for testing purposes, and um, um, basically this test will just run. So for me, uh, when I talk about development, I actually highly recommend that most of testing is done this way. Because uh, if we talk about classic pipelines like Argo CD, et cetera, they are not very reproducible on your local machine. Uh, yes, uh, there is a lot of projects that try doing that. Uh, but when you develop locally, it's actually super uh, useful because here you can just say, uh, run this test. Let's bet that nothing uh, really runs. Uh, because, yeah, I'm not sure that uh, even uh, Docker engine provisioned at the moment, but... So, test finished. Yeah, it was a bit earlier today when it actually worked. Mm -hmm. But, well, here, uh, even if it runs, uh, we won't see much here because uh, the container will be just provisioned transparently and then uh, the test will be executed. It's just one of the requests. Uh, so this is simple, but actually when we talk about uh, real applications, real testing, um, it becomes um, um, much more sophisticated. So if you don't mind, I'll switch to Wimo Cloud just to show how it actually looks uh, in UI. Uh, be, uh, it, it's a little bit simpler this way, but uh, again, uh, everything is available in YMOC2. So for example, if we talk, oh, yeah, conveniently we have XKCD uh, API. Well, we have them. But he, yeah, here, for example, um, yeah, it's basically UI that just parses the configuration file, allows editing, but yeah, again, you can do the same. And here you can see that you can actually put a lot of things like uh, fetching by query parameters, by cookies, by body, there is form support, uh, there is also a GraphQL extension that which basically extends to this number of option, uh, options uh, tenfold. And yeah, what happens here is that you have just this response uh, and you can actually uh, send tests. For, so for example, here I will just send a test request, I believe it yeah, so it's basically what is our mock does. So for this particular uh, request, there is, uh, returns uh, this, AP, uh, this response, and well, this is basically a principle of mocking. Then a lot of other features uh, can be extended. So for example, uh, YMOC, of course, uh, dumps uh, configure uh, request history. 
So again, uh, it's JSON, but uh, this JSON basically provides all the metadata you can parse, for example, in your testing tool. Uh, there is already a converter to Jenkins X unit tests for some additional metadata injection, and you can, uh, can put uh, a lot more th such things. And uh, yeah, uh, if you talk about even more complex APIs, so um, yeah, we actually have APIs library, so it's a kind of um, a template project that you can uh, use. So for example, if you use GitHub Enterprise, you can just use GitHub V3 API, and we already have uh, ready to fly uh, YMOC JSONs, which are quite long. So, um, yeah, I won't uh, even launch them. I do not think they will even load, but this is how it actually looks for something real when you really stop uh, the responses. Because how we actually build these files, uh, it's a combination of uh, sniffing of APIs. So we basically put uh, uh, YMOC Cloud as a proxy uh, uh, in front of, in this case, it's GitHub Enterprise, so it's version 2.21. Uh, after that, YMOC Cloud just extracted all the traffic, then uh, we applied some intelligence and to rebuild open API uh, examples and also uh, we generated mocks based on all of them. So it's basically a huge sample but if you want to start with uh, a bunch of common services you can just take the APIs from there. And of course uh, there is a lot of documentation for different cases that explain how to do that. Sorry for uh, uh, just a uh, uh, short detour, I just wanted to show how this smoking uh, looks in principle. Uh, because, yeah, how is our test doing? The test didn't record any output. Sounds promising, right? Invalid bound config for type bound. Okay, so I know what uh, happens here because when you run uh, this test on Windows, you need to start uh, Docker engine uh, as administrator because otherwise it uh, shows you this crappy error uh, with test containers. Uh, Good old Windows. Hmm? Good old Windows. Yeah. So it's not something I'm going uh, to try with uh, admin today. But yeah, I have, uh, if you want a letter, I can uh, just show uh, it later because I have VSL. Uh, so there is a lot of advantages that I could show. Okay, let's just finish uh, with the presentation because yeah, we don't have much time. So yeah, again, uh, putting it in front of uh, the proxy is actually a super useful use case for all kinds of reverse engineering, for all kinds of uh, error injection. And uh, actually, it also works well with uh, load balancers, etc., because uh, you can actually put a load balancer in front of YMOC, even so to complicate things even more. So, for example, for various kinds of A/B testing, uh, compatibility testing against the specification, you could do things like that uh, just for additional uh, verification. Um, and yeah, uh, there is a lot of uh, various advanced use, use cases for proxying. Uh, so, if you want, uh, we can uh, dive into. So what I wanted uh, to still show to you today is uh, that there are two tools. One is Microx, another one is YMOC. And in my opinion, these tools can be actually used together in some cases, and these tools don't replace each other. So depending on your use case, you are free to choose uh, what you use. And in my case, yeah, of course, I'm not advertising for any particular one. I'm just uh, showing you comp uh, table uh, comparison. Yeah, there was a tweet something like two weeks ago, like product manager uh, doing uh, feature evaluation. So I'm not that product manager. Uh, okay, so uh, just a few things about deployments. So YMOC uh, starts from bare metal. Uh, yeah, there is .NET Core uh, implementation. There is Quarkus native that runs. There is Graal VM, which is basically Quarkus native but without Graal. Uh, that all uh, that should run, but I haven't tried. Um, yeah, then uh, there is all kinds of deployments to any GVM. Um, the, and then basically Bicrox and YMOC do more or less the same. So what is missing for cloud native deployments is of course operator. So you cannot scale to zero with YMOC without uh, doing some scripting. Uh, so the same for example for scaling. Uh, you cannot implement auto scaling with YMOC again with some, uh, without some scripting. In practice 
practice, I wouldn't say that uh, this use case ever matters because when we talk about mocking, actually uh, the mock server is not supposed to handle heavy payloads. It has micro scripting, etc. But I have never seen a case when uh, YMOC actually uh, goes down uh, as a single instance on the cluster. So yeah, if you want to do massive uh, scale testing, uh, then probably, but still. And, uh, yeah, what on the other side, uh, so Binkrox doesn't run in test containers, it doesn't run in uh, similar setups. Again, you can do that because uh, YMO, uh, sorry, Microx has Docker Compose setup. As a demo, you can try uh, without Kubernetes. So in principle, somebody could extend it and to use it for unit testing, but it hasn't been done yet. And for SaaS, yeah, we have uh, YMO Cloud. So for operations, uh, yeah, we discussed it before, they are more or less on pair, uh, except uh, the scalability things. Uh, another part is that basically uh, Microx doesn't have platform SDKs, it doesn't have pla uh, platform clients. So yes, you can uh, take it open API specification and generate the client, but with uh, all of the limitations. For features, um, so my opinion uh, that uh, YMOC is actually much more powerful when it comes to request matching, request templating. This is what I wasn't presenting today, but uh, if you go to YMOC documentation, there is actually insane number of different features for matching, for processing, uh, and actually there is also an extension engine uh, that allows you to write your own handling logic, and there are a few dozens of extensions already. So here, for example, uh, yeah, if you go to Stabbing, uh, Stabbing for example, yeah, we definitely need to refactor these pages a bit, uh, but yeah, you can find that uh, there is a lot of various features, there is some samples. Hopefully we will have uh, samples for Go Golang 2 soon, because uh, yeah, we are starting uh, to inject uh, multi-configuration to our documentation, so you can find a lot here. Uh, yeah. And uh, the key weakness uh, for YMOC is, of course, async behavior, because at the moment it doesn't support one, while Microc does, Microx does. So, for example, if you use web sockets, et cetera, that are supposed to be async, then uh, with uh, YMOC you have to use stateful behavior. So basically, uh, uh, it has a, a state machine that can be can reproduce async behavior, but uh, yeah, it's much more complex. Uh, the rest of the features are more or less the same. For protocols, yeah, which is important, uh, that yeah, all async things. So for example, uh, Kafka. Rabbit, sorry, nuts, pops up, etc. So at the moment it's supported only by Microx. Hopefully it will be supported by Wimox soon, but if you depend on these protocols, uh, of course you have to go to with Microx. Uh, quite opposite for cloud events, because for cloud events we have POC, Microx doesn't support it, but I believe that it's also a feature for Sync API, so soon it will be supported. And actually that's it. Uh, does anyone do chaos engineering? But yeah, if you want, uh, yeah, this is actually one of the features that is currently available uh, only in YMO Cloud. Maybe later it will be available in open source. Well, technically you can script it already because fault injection is there. But if you want uh, some chaos engineering for your APIs, you can uh, just use uh, cloud implementation. And yeah, for developer experience, there is a lot of things, but uh, basically a uh, key point for Microx is so that it has embedded UI for those who like it. Ob obviously everyone has quite good CLIs. Um, and uh, for editors, integrations, reusable templates, everything is more or less here. Uh, but yeah, for YMOC it's just uh, more mature as an ecosystem because YMOC was around for 10 years. So there is a lot of projects and a lot of contributors who, who created tooling for that. So, in summary, there is no silver bullet, so you can take uh, one tool or another. Uh, I just uh, tried to put key points on a single slide. So yeah, for cloud native implementations, for scaling to zero, most likely you want to go with Microx because yeah, otherwise you have to implement a bunch of stuff. 
uh, by the way, feel free to do it in open source. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, for more protocols out of the box, so for example, for sync protocols, of course, you, of course you go for Microx. Uh, but if we talk about advanced matching, advanced uh, processing, then uh, YMOC actually has a lot of advantages. And the fact that you can actually shift left all the implementation and testing, so your developers without Kubernetes, without uh, bulky stops can actually do the stuff. Uh, uh, they can uh, run with YMOC. So for embedding purposes, there is multiple approaches. So uh, you can basically, my re in recommendation for YMOC is actually use it as a part of uh, integration test and test framework most of the time. So you don't have to implement the things. But if you need, yeah, there is a number of examples. Uh, yeah, I present a uh, slow demo, so <laughs> let's... Uh, without Kubernetes cluster, I don't think I want to uh, show much. Okay, uh, so what uh, happens for us next? Uh, so there will be a lot of additional setups uh, and basically everything I mentioned today is being productized at the moment. So in uh, two or three months, we will have 1.0 releases for everything. And uh, if you would like to try and to share feedback, it's a good time because everything is in preview or, and uh, we would appreciate the feedback at the moment. There is also one thing happening on the enterprise uh, part. Uh, yeah, there will be Kubernetes edition for on-premise uh, deployments on YMO Cloud, but again, it's if you are into uh, enterprise tools. So takeaways, uh, take the tool you like and uh, just uh, see what tool uh, fits your use case. Um, I think uh, basically it will be 50-50 depending on your implementation and on the status of your integration tests. And uh, yeah, there is a lot of information and again, it's always a good time for contribute. So if you are interested in integration testing, if you are interested in developer tools like me, there is actually a Microx waiting for contributions, a YMOC waiting for contributions, and there is a lot of stuff that could be done to integrate all the integration testing and the cloud native ecosystem. Because at the moment, uh, I'm not sure how do you feel, but for me, all tooling around cloud native is a bit flaky, and uh, I'm missing so many things that uh, I used to have in Java world, uh, even in embedded world, uh, uh, for uh, stability, for coverage analysis, and of course for integration testing. So maybe we could adapt existing tools or other improve Microx to actually provide uh, a lot more test coverage and a lot more quality for our delivery pipelines. So that's it from me, and yeah, sorry for the demo. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm.